We're racing on the ground and in the air today on AYL, so you better put your helmet on and strap yourself in. I'm Rhea Rossi Booth. And I'm Chad Booth. We're celebrating the final season of one Salt Lake City landmark that has defined high performance competition in the West for 50 years. We'll find out why it's been such an integral part of so many people's lives. Then, we'll hit the sky as one pilot uses hot air balloons to train for the biggest race of 2018. All that and more coming your way right now on At Your Leisure. The sound of 10,000 horsepower top fuel dragster, it will just, it'll rattle your bones and send adrenaline shooting through your veins. Might even make you jump. A pro funny car will do the same thing as it hits 330 miles per hour in less than four seconds. Talk about a roller coaster thrill. Scenes like these, drag racers burning out, oval track cars pushing the limit, and technicians cleaning their engines to perfection have been a mainstay here at Rocky Mountain Raceway since it first opens its doors as the old Bonneville racetrack back in 1968. Yeah, I remember that. And later this year, it's all coming to an end. And that's why we're here to celebrate the final season of Rocky Mountain Raceway. That's true. This has been a venerable part of the establishment of racing community for nearly four decades, and it all comes to an end. Right now, we want to find out a little bit about the history that brought all these racing people together for this project. I cannot tell you how many people that I know that met here for the first time, fell in love here, are now married with kids that still race. You know, this place is a real, real special place to a lot of people. Spencer Young with the Young Automotive Group purchased the old Bonneville Raceways in 1995 and throughout 1996 and the early part of 97 constructed this awesome facility that we have. This is actually the closest track to my hometown. Uh, very sorry that we're going to be losing it at the end of this year for sure. But it's just the challenge of going rounds, trying to make the car perform, trying to be the last guy on the track. The next closest place for me is probably Las Vegas. Our racers are going to have to go a long way to go to continue to pursue their hobby. Five years ago, there are some development that's around the racetrack, and we sold about half the property that the track sits on, and uh, our lease runs out at the end of the year. We looked for multiple locations to build another venue, and you know, Utah's growing, and prices are very expensive, and we just couldn't find anything that made economic sense, so unfortunately, our, our lease has come to an end, and we're doing our best in this final season to make everything as great as we can, and all the great racing that we can, and make as many memories as possible, because a lot of people have made a lot of memories here on this piece of property. I've made a lot of great friends. This is kind of a family situation here. We just really enjoy coming down. Actually, I've been coming out here since the early 2000s. Um, my dad brought me here for my first time. It's where my love of racing began. You know, there's not very much racing in general here in Utah that's good for the small track experience like this. So it's really, it's, it's pretty loving to see it go. I wish it would be around long enough for us to bring our daughter out. When I bought the tickets, we learned this was the last year. So we said we have to come. Racing needs to be everywhere in every community. I think it gives people an avenue to come out and do something safely where they're not doing it on the streets and things like that. But unfortunately, I mean, it is a business and it is a tough business. So our calendar this year runs through September 29th and there is amazing things on every one of our races, like between tonight with the Nitro Funny Cars and the Jets and the figure eight trailer race. And I mean, throughout the year, I mean, we, we run semis and we got monster trucks. You absolutely need to come out to one of our events. You, you won't forget it. That's better than a cup of coffee in the morning. <laughs> anyway, listen, you know, some people, they, they kind of like this really fun, loud crowd stuff, like me. And some people, they like it really quiet, a little quiet affair. We're going to go to our travel adventure and check this out. I almost hate to give this kind of information away because people come down and see it, and we don't want it to be taken away from us. This is so gorgeous and beautiful that it's a, it's a place that we, we hold sacred. 
When you hear people talk about an area in hollow terms like that, you tend to think about national parks like Zion, Bryce, maybe a red rock expanse down in Moab. Not a trail outside of Beaver, Utah. Because some of you might be thinking, what's Beaver anyway besides a few exits off of I-15? There's more to Beaver County than just the gas stops and of course the cheese factory and everything else that goes along with people associate Beaver to be. Now I know what you're thinking, are you sure? Trust me guys, I used to think the exact same thing. But over the last few years, I've had the chance to explore the trail less traveled out here and meet the people that call Beaver home. It's been eye-opening, and now I can't seem to get enough, which is why I'm riding ATVs again with the Tusher Mountain ATV Group along the Rock Corral in the Mineral Mountains just west of town. I loved it, it was a great ride. It was called the Rock Corral Ride. This canyon we came down, I had no idea it was even here. It's the first time I'd ever been on this side of the mountains down this trail. It's a little bit of a challenge, but it's a definitely a moderate ride. We had the trail cat in here the first part of April to uh, clean it up so it was more safe for people to travel on. And uh, I think it's an awesome ride. There's nice riding for people who are new and, and can't handle a bike or four-wheeler. And then there's the, the more skilled stuff, like coming up here is a little bit higher skilled for a motorcycle. It's, it's hard riding. I enjoyed how there was like eight different terrains that we went through. So like it starts out as like just dust and dirt and then turned into like mountains and courts and it was really, it was really cool. And you'd be amazed just how quickly you can get to some pretty spectacular stuff. We'd only ridden a short time when we came to our first major stop. So right now we're in a place called The Park. Absolutely beautiful scenery surrounded by these giant granite cliffs. Where are we headed next, Michelle? We are going to the Granite Peak Reservoir. It's one of the triple C's. Triple C's. Now you're telling me, so this is a hiking place, right? Yep, this is a short family friendly hike and it's, it's going to be cool. It's a secret and I'm about to let it out. <laughs> Let's go! Alright, I'm just going to come out and say it. Granite Creek is pretty cool. I mean, look at this place. It's like something out of a tourism catalog from Europe. Hi, I climbed a rock. I need to get down from here. <laughs> what are you doing Saturday night? Oh, I don't know. I think we're doing something. Don't be hitting on the intern. Max, that's rule number one. What was your favorite part of the ride? <laughs> well, no need to use that language, my gosh. Between the riding, the hiking, and the friends on the trail, I don't think there's a way anyone could come up short on a day like today. And I think that's what makes experiences so much more than just the sum of their parts. Any one aspect of the adventure by itself would still be pretty great. You'd have a challenging ride or the chance to climb granite cliffs, but together, they become something truly special. And that's what happens when you climb on your machine and decide to discover the world around you. It takes you places that you were in your backyard that you never realized were here. My, my wife, Laura, is with us today, and she has never seen this. And it's opening her eyes we both lived here for over 40 years in Beaver County. And like most people, if you, if you have no access to these mountains, you don't really realize what's here. This is absolutely gorgeous. Well, what it does for me is it brings back to, to home what we have in the United States. We have the beauty of, of this country. This is, this is out where nobody's at. There's no cell phones, no running water, no power. You know, you, you end up bringing everything that you have. and it, it just unites them with nature. And uh, I love just the fact of bringing my kids to a place where they can, they can be away from the, the society and, and the turmoil of society. And that is one of the things that makes this place, well, sacred. Once again, I really want to thank everyone here in Beaver County for taking me on such an amazing ride. I mean, look at this. There's no way I was ever going to find something like this by myself. So if you want to go on rides like this, go into the Beaver County offices. They've got trail maps for you for all their ATVs and talk to Michelle and she'll give you specific directions on how to go on this hike. Well, more at your leisure. Happy break.
How much do you think it would cost to spend a few days at a golf resort with your accommodations on the fairway and a lake to your back? Two, three hundred dollars a night? How about 25 or 30? Ray City RV can make that dream come true because Utah has several state parks with golf courses attached. Ray City RV has the RV that's right for you. Find out how you can enjoy the passion of your dreams in the outdoors with a new RV from Ray City RV, Utah's low price leader since 1946. You have a message, you have a brand, you have something worth experiencing. What you don't have is an audience. It's time to change that. It's time to partner up with the number one outdoor program in the country and show the world what you have to offer. Advertising on At Your Leisure is effective and affordable, giving you an audience that dwarfs anything else out there. Backed by a proven force of outdoor adventure. Contact the AYL team at 801-947-8888. It's time your message was heard. Welcome back to At Your Leisure, I'm Corinne Smart. Today, I'll be doing a product review on a Yamaha 242X. It has a lot of awesome features that I can't wait to show you. So let's go on the water and I'll show you what I mean. So the bow of the boat is actually my favorite place to be on the boat because it has the best view. Right here, there is a ladder that you can put directly into the water. And right here is also the anchor storage. You know you have little kids and they're always around. One of the greatest places they love to sit is at the very front of the boat. So one awesome feature about this boat is that these cushions come off. They can be stowed away underneath these hingeable seats. There's a lot of storage space under these seats. So your kids are going to sit up here and they have so much fun. They can see everything. What's awesome about this boat as well is that it has sea deck. Um, this sea deck is poppable, so you can take it off if you want to completely clean your boat and you can just pop these right back in place when they are all clean. It has an optional head, which if you don't know what that means, it's a bathroom. Right here in that compartment, you can put a porta potty Let me see if I can fit. <laughs> but obviously you'd be sitting taller. What are you doing? Uh. The Yamaha 242X also has an awesome captain's chair for a passenger. Uh, these recline up as well as the seat reclines back. And what's also great is that it turns around. Super simple. This is a glove box. You want to make sure to keep all of your papers, registration, everything in here. And right here is a lock box. This is the captain's chair. Everything can be controlled off of this screen right here. Your ballast control, your bilge pumps. What you can also do is set your target speed. So if a surfer you don't want to go 25 miles an hour, so you can set the target speed to be 12 miles an hour, which is normal for a surfer, right? So with this system, you can set up five different profiles for different riders or events. So this is Yamaha's version of Perfect Pass. So what is boating without the tunes, right? You can hook up your phone to Bluetooth, press play. So the Yamaha 242X is equipped with an extra large sunshade. It has a solar power connector right here that will help charge the batteries in the back of the boat. And for those days that you want extra sun, there's a sunroof. So right here is Yamaha's own dual overhead cam fuel injected motors. So these engines are super fuel efficient um, and they need very little maintenance. These engines are 1.8 liter engines. They have four cylinders each and they are combined power of 360 horsepower. So with this boat, um, these are electric throttles, so you want to make sure that when you are going fast and you want to slow down, don't just nudge it down, make sure you, you gradually move the throttle down to slow down the boat. And one last thing I want to mention about this boat is that it has two-piece construction, which makes it more sturdy and rough water. So there's so many other features on this boat that we didn't get to show you. So be sure to go visit our friends at Dick's Boat Shop in Clearfield, Utah. They'll be able to give you all the information that you need. And believe it or not, everything that we showed you on this boat today comes standard. Well, that's all the time that we have today. More at your leisure in just a minute.
There's a little place on a Utah map where I was raised, where my heart's at, where the sagebrush grows wild and high, and the stars come out at night. In the basin with the Ute Reservation Skin starvation That Duchesne County life Meet the new leader in off-road utility The completely reinvented Ranger XP1000 It's got the most power The largest towing capacity The highest ground clearance And the best comfort and storage Introducing the all-new Polaris Ranger XP1000, the hardest-working, smoothest-riding Ranger ever built. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. We are out here enjoying the final season of the Rocky Mountain Raceway racetrack, and this is a modified oval group of cars and they all have to be painted yellow as part of the Hornet class. And they do say the Hornet class, right? Yep, that's it's it. So cool. All right, well, we're going to find out what it takes to be one of these courageous racers. I'm a drag racer. <laughs> I love everything about it. You know, for me, I, I'm kind of a car guy anyway. I love to repair cars, I love to modify cars, I love to build cars. So this kind of sport really speaks to me. Oh, it's, it's an adrenaline rush. It just feels like drugs are just coming in through your hands, up into your arms and into your head. And, and it's just like, yes! It's just that awesomeness. I met Scotty, my husband, and he was a drag racer. and. I came out here for the first time and and it was funny because at first when I first came out here I wasn't used to the engines revving up and and being really loud so when a car would start I'd be startled every single time and it took quite a while to, to not be startled anymore but I love the smell, I love everything about it. it, it it's the best dream that anybody could ever have. You know her interest in it feeds my interest in it. She's actually really good at it but you know what? If we ever have to race head to head, I'm whipping your butt, baby. It's actually proven that girls are better on the light. We have a better reaction time. So we, in fact, do better than the guys. How fast do you actually go when you're, you know, when you're in like full throttle? Uh, 128 miles an hour in 10 seconds. And then you have to have all your safety gear. You've got to have your helmet, you've got to have your, your fire suit and your helmet. And some people even have to wear gloves and uh, fire pants and fire shoes, depending on how fast you go. The top class cars, the top sportsman cars, just like this one over my shoulder that I drive, we only have maybe about six or seven events throughout the season. So, Scott, tell me about this run. I, I beat myself is what happened. It's like a chess game out there, see? When you play that kind of a chess game, there's so many things that can happen. There's so many things that could take place in that short period of time. Just bring your car out to the racetrack and do street night and just run with the local people that just come out every once in a while just to have fun, to get a little bit of adrenaline rush and be with other people with cars. And... Yeah. Ah! conversation while there's that much noise. <laughs> and then you got earplugs in, so this is really fun. That's true. So that is the perfect definition of a money to noise converter. Exactly. But it also delivers more adrenaline than you'll probably get in 10 years all at once. Exactly. Every 30 seconds, those guys pop off that line. It's well, crazy. Right, right now, I think Tanya's just around the corner. She's getting ready to make her way up to the line, so we'll see how she runs. We want to tell you that coming right after her race, comes to you, our Rocky Mountain ATV MC Trailhead Adventure, our great friends in Payson that do so much to help bring all these stories of the great outdoors. As the sun rises over the Arizona desert, it's going to be another scorcher outside Phoenix. But the heat is more intense than usual and doesn't come from where you'd probably expect. June 5th is National Hot Air Balloon Day, and these pilots are getting ready to celebrate by hitting some desert thermals. But they're not going alone. 
You see, this isn't your standard soaring spot. It's actually the training ground for Kirby Shambliss, one of the best sport pilots in the world. And the hot air balloons aren't just here for fun either. They're practice. What we're doing out here today is I'm going to be out flying around these hot air balloons and I'm going weaving back and forth between them. It's a little bit different than doing that around, say, our pylons because the balloons are quite a bit wider and then also, you know, you can't hit the balloons. Normally, Shambliss would be training on a course more like this in preparation for the Red Bull Air Races. Banking and weaving through the pylons is no problem, but the challenge today is adjusting for the subtle changes that could push the balloons and alter his course. It's hair raising, but this isn't just a stunt either. There's good reason for today's tribute to ballooning and a link to October's American leg of the air races. Well, the reason we did that today is kind of like a little bit of tie-in. You know, the up and coming race for the United States will be at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And the very first event at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway was a hot air balloon race, and we just thought that'd be kind of a cool thing. The display is something locals and balloon enthusiasts have never seen before, as the sky lights up with fire and color while the plane maneuvers between them. Once the balloons release into the air and leave the course behind, Shambliss follows, turning his training routine into an impromptu acrobatic show above, around, and through the balloons. All of the tricks and high-speed exploits are in preparation for the most difficult aerial competition in the world. On October 8th and 9th, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway will become the battleground for pilots pushing through a course designed to challenge every skill they have behind the stick. It's two laps, 16 air gates, and two key vertical turning maneuvers. And it isn't for the faint of heart. Once inside the cockpit, there's no room for mistakes. 3-1, perfect take on. So here we go, diving into the track, once again looking for the magic number of 200 knots. And now this is where the fun starts, we're getting towards the end of the first lap. Here comes all the genes of proof! While Red Bull pilots may prepare for moments like this, it's probable views like this that are a bit more enjoyable. After all, it isn't every day you can celebrate hot air balloons from such a unique vantage point. As the day progresses and the temperature blazes past 90 degrees, the flights come to an end. Tomorrow's practice will be back to basics for Shambliss, but at the very least, he'll see the Arizona desert outside his home a little differently after this colorful dawn. From the trailhead, I'm Malia Stringham. Two thousand fence posts, nine hundred acres, forty-eight bales, all before lunch, which we caught last Saturday. We earn our scars. We wear our work ethic. We work until the work's done. And when it is, a few hours of shut eye to rest up for tomorrow, the day will finally get something done. Too often we find ourselves in shoes like these, or these. Wouldn't it be nice to change into something more like this, or this? How about these? Put on whatever shoes you prefer and come to Beaver County. We have exactly the adventure you need to put under them. So the next time you want to change out of these, come to Beaver County where you can jump into a pair of these. Beaver County, Utah. Lace up for adventure. Go, seek, discover what lies beyond on the entirely new 2018 Goldwing Tour. 
from Honda. everybody this has been one heck of a fun day and I mean you talk about adrenaline rush 24 7 second after second after second it's crazy out here there's still time to enjoy this facility here which has been a part of the history of Salt Lake Valley for at least three decades oh I mean gosh. I can remember coming out here when I was a kid amazing but you know what you have until September and then it closes if you ever want to mark part of history this is the year to come out here. Yep. We got a lot to do right now, though, so let's get on and take a look at our contest winner for this week. We caught this Toyota Sequoia at a red light on 3300 South in Salt Lake with its AYL sticker right there. License number Z622HV. Call us at 801 947 8888 because you just want a Camp Chef stove. Perfect for your next camping trip or backyard barbecue. Congratulations to our sticker winner. Now, let's take a look at next week's show. We're riding through history next week as Rhea joins me, Stephen Human, for a trip back in time. We'll show how you can ride your ATVs from one Utah destination all the way to the newest historic spot on Highway 89. We'll have a detailed rundown of how to do it. Then Reese Stein heads to New York for another historic glimpse at Fort Ticonderoga. Own the outdoors next week, right here on AYL. Duck down on us. That's how much adrenaline is out here on the racetrack. So next week's show may be hard to match, but just so you know, you can come out here and catch some of that adrenaline yourself every weekend of the season. That's right. Just go to RockyMountainRaceway.com and check out all their weekend events. That's true. Ovals, two out of three weeks, and drags every single week. So it's a lot of fun to come out with your family and enjoy. Just remember to bring your earplugs. Oh yeah, you will want to do that. That <laughs> That's was all I want to say. That was really, really loud. Remember, there's adventure around every van. You've got to get out there and create your own adventure. At, at your, your leisure. leisure. And watching your kids' faces. You can't see your kids' faces. They're facing the other way. They're facing the other way, but they'll be like, Dad. Thanks for letting us hang out with you today. Absolutely. I, I feel like a real groupie. <laughs> <laughs> Are you out of gas by the time you hit that finish line? Scott. I burn about half the tank. 